If stocks are the six-cylinder engine that propels you towards growing your wealth, then bonds are like the brakes that keep the ride steady and on the road. In order to effectively manage your investments, you need a little bit of both. Too much engine without the brakes and you could drive yourself off the road. Too much brakes without the engine and you aren't really going anywhere. So the big question is then, what bond should I buy? Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, a channel dedicated to helping the Santa generation master money and achieve financial security. And before I go on, if you have yet to download your free copy of the Santa generation, Guide to Financial Security, 10 Steps Securing Your Family's Financial Future, please go to my website at financialtortoise.com and do so. I send out weekly newsletters with other great tips on mastering your money, and I wouldn't want you to miss them. It's exciting to talk about stocks. Fortunes are made and lost with the rise and fall of the stock market. Look, I love that at 40 is an insult at 50. They're analysts, they don't know preferred stock from livestock, all right? And rightly so, given that for the average individuals like you and I, Stocks, more specifically index funds, serve as one of the greatest wealth building tools. However, having only stocks in your portfolio can be a bit risky, especially if you're getting closer to your retirement age. At various times in your investment journey, you want to add a bit of bonds to your portfolio to smooth out the ride. And VBTLX, Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund, in my opinion, is the one and only bond fund you need in your portfolio to help smooth out your investment ride. At an expense ratio of only 0.05%, VBTLX has over 10,000 individual bonds within its fund with varying credit ratings, issuers, and maturity dates. So in this video, we're going to dive into bonds, what they are, what risks they come with, and most importantly, why buying VBTLX is your best option for holding bonds. To begin with, you might be asking, what are bonds anyways? And how do they differ from stocks? Simply think of bonds as loans. When you buy bonds, you're essentially loaning money to a company or a government agency. Ever heard of US savings bonds or corporate bonds? Government agencies or corporations issue these bonds and when they're bought, these organizations are essentially getting a loan from the buyers. Stocks, on the other hand, are part ownership of a company. When you buy stocks, you're buying a piece of the company itself not lending in money. Okay, that's interesting and all, but why do we want it in our portfolio? There are several benefits that bonds provide that stocks do not. The first reason you want bonds in your portfolio is that they make our investment road much smoother with this lower volatility. If you were to compare the total stock market trends, VTSAX versus the total bond market index, VBTLX the past 20 years, VBTLX has smaller overall gains but has much less volatility than the VTSAX. What having bonds in your portfolio will do for you is that during times of market crash where your stock investment can dip by 20 to 30%, your bond investments will hold steady. Now, if you're in your 20s and 30s and don't plan on dipping into your investments anytime soon, having the majority of your investment in stocks is actually a better move. You have time on your side to ride out the ups and downs of the stock market. However, if you're nearing your retirement and want to tap into your nest egg soon, you want bonds in your portfolio. You don't want to be caught in a situation where you need to pull your money from the stock market when it is 20 to 30% down. Another reason you want bonds in your portfolio is that they act as deflation hedge. Inflation and deflation are two big macro risks that impact our portfolio. Inflation is when price of goods soars and deflation is when the price of goods spiral downward. We are currently in an inflation period, but the market has its own ebbs and flows, so we won't know when we will enter a deflation period again. Being invested in the stocks provide us a good hedge against inflation but we want to be prepared for periods of deflation as well with bonds. Remember, we're long-term investors, not market timers. In addition to reduce volatility and deflation hedge, another benefit of holding bonds is that they pay interest, providing additional income flow. And sometimes these interests can be tax-free with the right bonds. For example, US Treasury bonds are actually exempt from state and local taxes. But before you think bonds are all sprinkles and fairies, they have their own set of risks that you want to be aware of. And when you understand these risks, it'll help you to realize why VBTLX is indeed your best choice when it comes to investing in bonds. The first risk that I want to highlight is default risk that comes with holding bonds. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, bonds are essentially loans to a government or corporations. And responsible organizations, like responsible individuals, should ensure they meet their debt obligations, paying back you, the lender, regularly and on time. 
However, what happens if the organization is struggling to make its payments and defaults? You as the bondholder won't get your money back. So in order to help investors evaluate the risk of any company or government bond they're thinking about purchasing, various rating agencies like the Standard & Poor's evaluate their credit worthiness and give a grade ranging from AAA to D. Just like school grades, lower the rating, the higher the risk of default. Talking rock bottom FICO scores. No income verification. Now, with the higher risk bonds like double B and lower, their interest rates are higher because less people will be willing to buy these higher risk investments. So as a buyer of bonds, if you're willing to accept these higher risk, higher the interest rate you'll receive. Vanguard's total bond index fund, VBTLX, mitigates against this default risk by holding only investment grade bonds. There is no bond within VBTLX rated lower than triple B. Vanguard wants to provide you good returns, but not at the expense of unnecessary risks. Another risk that comes with owning a bond is the interest risk. This only comes into play if you decide to sell your bond before the maturity date at the end of its term, but it's a factor you want to consider. Let's say that you're looking to sell your bond before the maturity date. Date. If the going interest rate has changed since you're purchased, the value of the bond will change as well. For example, if the interest rate has gone up since you're purchased, the value of the bond will have decreased. Why? Because with the higher interest rate, let's say as an example, 6%, new bonds may be issued with this higher 6% interest rate, making your original bond with a lower interest rate, let's say 3%, less attractive. If you want to offload it, you'll need to offer it at a discount. If you're holding on to a few specific bonds with these lower interest rate, you could be in a world of hurt whenever the interest rate changes. But again, when you hold on to VBTLX, because it's holding bonds of widely different maturity dates, your interest rate risk is actually mitigated. The third risk I want to highlight is inflation risk. Inflation occurs when the cost of goods is rising. If you watch any news lately, it seems like everyone is talking about how high inflation is right now. In my neighborhood alone, basic food like egg and chicken are up 10 to 20% compared to what they cost last year. So if you're lending money by buying bonds during periods of inflation, when you get it back, you can afford less stuff. Last year, I was able to buy a carton of egg for $2. Now, it costs $2.50. And the bond interest rate is set by the anticipated inflation rate. Generally, short-term bond pays less interest because it's associated with less risk. It's a shorter time horizon and your money is tied up for a shorter period of time. And long-term bonds pay more interest because of a higher associated risk. I know, it can be a bit confusing, but the bottom line is that if you decide to purchase individual bonds, you'll need to effectively manage this inflation risk. Anticipating what inflation will do in the future and making your associated bond purchase for your portfolio. And again, this is where VBTLX shines because when you purchase VBTLX, the fund already holds various bonds across broad range of terms short-term, mid-term, and long-term, effectively reducing inflation risk. No need to try to predict the future with a magic ball because honestly, none of us can. The bottom line is that when it comes to bonds, Vanguard's total bond index fund, the VBTLX, is really the only fund you need to hold in order to gain all the benefits that comes with holding bonds while mitigating all the risks like default, interest, and inflation risks. VBTLX has an expense ratio of 0.05% and its equivalent ETF is Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. B and D. At the time of this video, there are over 10,000 individual bonds within this one fund, all with various credit ratings, issuers, and maturity dates. I know I probably made this video more complicated than it needed to be, but I wanted you to have all the information so that you can make the most informed decision when managing your investment. Buy VBTLX and start adding them little by little as you get closer to your retirement age. If you want to learn more about asset allocation and why they're important for your portfolio, check out my video here. And if you found value from this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button below. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and allows videos like this to be shared with more people. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.